There's many ways people are using to earn extra money. Selling used stuff, ride sharing, even renting out rooms when you're not using them. However, one of my favorites is the idea of freelancing network sites. There are a few that will, for a monthly fee, help you hire or be hired to complete tasks ranging from one-off projects to long-term assignments. I love this because it helps everyone involved. It helps sharpen people's skills while bringing dreams one step closer to realization. But when would it be a good fit for you? This is a hard question, and it involves some wisdom and math. Let me tell you what I did. I worked briefly as a freelance photographer. I picked a networking site and got a sense for what people were doing. In my audit, I paid particular attention to those that had high ratings, stock portfolios, and clear price listings. I found where my personal price point should be considering my skill level. I was beyond what I felt was the minimum skill level for being reasonably able to offer my services for money in the first place, and I was careful not to judge myself against photographers of a much higher skill, as I might get paralyzed with inaction. The big question then was the financial aspect of it. I had my price, and I needed to figure out what one month's worth of overhead would look like for this to be a good business venture for me. Here's what I came up with. I'll use a spreadsheet to sort of break this down. Let's start with the overhead, the cost of doing business. Here's a breakdown of my monthly costs. The photography equipment that I need cost about $2,400. That's the lenses and tripods and all that stuff. I'd like to pay that off in about a year, which gives me about $200 per month. The software I use to edit the photos is 10 bucks a month. Car maintenance, which is just oil changes and all that stuff, comes in at about $30 per month. Gasoline is $100 per month. You wanna have some money set aside for gear upgrades, and I wanted to put away about $100 per month for that. And honestly, it only makes sense to do this if I'm making some extra money, so I needed to make $200 towards rent and utilities to make this venture worthwhile. Adding all that up gives me $640. Next, I had to decide what kind of gigs I would offer to do. My thought was to start with something simple, photography for real estate listings. Judging from what I saw being offered at the time in that local area, $200 per shoot felt competitive for an average two-bedroom home. Now, once I gained some experience, there's all sorts of other factors that go into making a price, but for where I was, that's what I picked. Now, how many gigs would I need in order to meet my goals? And once I figured that out, would I have the actual time to complete those goals? Let's set up a formula. On the one hand, we've got our overhead. This is the money we spend doing business. In our case, it's $640. The thing we're comparing it against is how much I make in a month which is basically a string of 200s added together. Each gig will get me another $200. This is repeated addition, so we know that can be written as multiplication. But the problem is that because we don't know how many copies of 200 to add, we don't know what to multiply it by either. That's okay. Let's use a variable and call it x. x represents the number of gigs in a month. Now, what's the relationship between these two expressions? Now, this is where things get interesting. Often in math, we'll say that two expressions are equal. Let's think very carefully about what this means and lay down a few terms. The 200 that is being multiplied by x is called the coefficient of x. We see it so often that it gets its own name. An expression is a collection of symbols, numbers, variables, operators, and other mathematical elements that represent a quantity we have to here. One expression is 200x and the other expression is 640. Now, when we say that two expressions are equal, we are saying that the expressions represent the same quantity, regardless of how they were written. That is, you can plug in any number for x that you want, but when you evaluate each side, that is, carry out the indicated operations and simplify, then you'd better end up with the same number on both sides. Here, there's only one value for x that'll work. The method you would use to discover it is called solving, in this case for the variable x. Spoken, we call it solving for x. The steps you would take to go down this path are called inverse operations. We'll solve for x now, but I won't go into too much detail because this is a big topic. We'll see it many times in the coming videos. Essentially, we will divide both sides by 200 like so, and then convert the fraction into a decimal. This leaves us with x equals 3.2. Now this doesn't make any sense. I need to have 3.2 gigs? What? Well, there's two ways of approaching this. First, we can simply round up and say that we need four gigs to fulfill my monthly goals. There's actually nothing wrong with this. However, there's an opportunity here to use something more interesting, an inequality. 
here's what this would look like. Read aloud, this says that 200x is greater than 640. Let's break down the terms and how this symbol is made so that we can use it in the future. We call two expressions joined by an equal sign an equation. By contrast, we call two expressions joined by an inequality sign an inequality. There's only a handful of them. I've shown you one here, the greater than symbol. Let's see what went into making that symbol so that we can build the rest of them. The left side of this inequality is our way of representing some quantity with symbols. This is what it might look like to us as an image. The same is true of the right side, which might look like this. If we want this inequality to be a true statement, then the left side's bar should be taller. Now, here's what it looks like to generate the symbol. Whoa. To do that, we simply consider the values in the same order in which we read them, from left to right. So in this case, the left value is greater than the right value, so that's what we'll name the symbol, greater than. If, however, we had simply happened to construct our formula in the other direction, putting the 640 on the left and the 200x on the right, we would have ended up with this. This is effectively the same inequality. Here's the new symbol being made. And of course, the new symbol is just the reverse of the first. Naming it is just as simple. Again, we will consider the values in the same order in which we read them, from left to right. In this case, the left value is less than the right value, so we'll call this symbol the less than symbol. There is one more small detail, though, which can be illustrated in this picture here. In actual real estate photography, Sometimes I can't take pictures of the inside of a house, either due to renovations, residents wanting to maintain privacy, or whatever. In these cases, I'd only be able to take curb shots of the house, which usually consist of far fewer shots and thus means less work on my part. For this service, I might charge, say, a fifth of my normal fee, in this case, 40 bucks. Let's factor this into the inequality. Let me represent the number of curb shots with another variable. If we were using x before, it would make sense to use y now. So, if I make $40 from a curb shot, then to figure out how much money I made that month from curb shots, that would be 40y. We then just add that to the amount I made from regular gigs, which looks like this. Here, we can see that it's now quite possible that I could break even, that is, make exactly $640. In this case, it'd still make sense to do it, because getting $640 exactly means I'm paying my bills. Here's the issue, though. Right now, we have a greater than symbol. There's a little thing that usually goes unsaid, greater than but not equal to. That is, if the left side is, after plugging in values for both x and y, equal to exactly 640, then this statement is actually false. That is not what we want. To fix this, we make a simple alteration to our symbol. We'll make the greater than or equal to sign. To make it, we simply think about what the equal symbol is, two horizontal bars, and pilfer one of them. In this case, we steal the bottom bar and stick it under the greater than symbol like so. And there you have it. We now have the greater than or equal to symbol, and happily, this also works for the less than or equal to symbol as well. We can now use these four symbols to build inequalities in various situations. Now, did we need to do all of that for this particular situation? Well, probably not, but now that we have, we can ask all sorts of questions that might well guide our actions in terms of choosing to accept or turn down gigs. It would take me one full day to do a $200 regular gig, or half that to do a $40 curb shoot gig. I could spend three out of four weekends in a month doing gigs. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to break even each month as a result, so I ended up not doing it. On a personal level, what happened to my photography? Well, I ended up doing a bunch of random stuff. I started getting into macro photography, landscape photography, abstract photography. I played around with time lapses. I took a slew of family photos. And eventually, I moved into videography and started a channel on YouTube called The Taylor Series. You might have heard of it. Yeah. <clears throat> the camera that's recording the footage you're watching right now is literally the camera I had so many years ago. So I didn't give up on the dream, I just pursued it down a different path. In this episode, we have introduced a bunch of new ideas. An expression is a combination of symbols that represents some quantity. An equation is a formula that links two expressions and claims that their quantities are equal. An inequality is a formula that links two expressions and claims that the quantities differ somehow, either as a greater than or less than sort of relationship, read from left to right. 
there are four basic inequality symbols. With the little equals bar underneath, the symbols mean or equal to. Without the bar, it means not equal to, though we usually don't say that part. In the future, we'll learn all sorts of stuff, ways of representing equations and inequalities against real world problems, and how to interpret different features of those different groupings of them to get stuff done. Thank you to Aragami for hosting this, and to all of my patrons for their support. I couldn't do this without you. And congratulations to you on reaching the next term in your own Taylor expansion. I'm Derek Taylor, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. If you really like the video, come on over to our Patreon page where you can get involved and see all the cool stuff we're doing.